Hi everyone, we're going to go through some buffer capacity problems today in order to show you that they actually are not as bad as you might think that they can be. So the first example we'll go through is simply calculating the pH of a buffer solution. So this buffer solution has been created to have a total volume of one liter. It is one tenth molar in acetic acid and we look up the pKa of acetic acid in a suitable table and it's also one-tenth molar in sodium acetate. So we have a source of a weak acid and we have a source of its conjugate base. Calculating the pH from this information is actually fairly simple. We'll use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation which says that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the weak acid. In this case that, ca that calculation is very simple because the concentration of the conjugate base is equal to the, to the concentration of the weak acid. So this becomes the log of 1, which is 0, and the pH is equal to the pKa of 4.74. So that's fairly simple. If the concentrations were different, we would just adjust the pH according to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and we would be all set. So that is how we calculate the pH of a buffer solution. But now, what happens to this buffer solution when we add a strong base? So we're going to take that buffer solution and now stress it by adding a strong base. So in this case, we take one liter of the buffer solution, that is 0.1 molar in acetic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium acetate, and add to it 0.0200 moles of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide in this case is a strong base and so we have to consider that the reaction of the strong base uh, and the weak acid has to go to completion. So that reaction looks like this. There's my weak acid, here is my strong base. It's going to form water and acetate ions. And I can use an ice table to figure out exactly how many moles I'll have. So in this case, I start with one liter times 0.1 mole per liter, which gives me 100 millimoles of acetic acid. And I have 0.02 moles or 20 millimoles. That's a thousand times that number in case you haven't seen that. 20 millimoles of hydroxide. And the acetate, I start with 0.1 mole per liter times 1 liter or 100 millimoles. The reactants are acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. So acetic acid, sodium hydroxide, uh-oh, I seem to have less hydroxide than I do weak acid. So hydroxide will be the limiting reagent in this, in this case. And since the reaction goes to completion, I will remove all of the hydroxide. So if I lose 20 millimoles of hydroxide, I have to react 20 millimoles of the other reactant, acetic acid, leaving 80 millimoles when the reaction is done. But in so doing, since I when I re react this, I'm forming acetate. So I started with 100 millimoles. I will add 20 millimoles to end up with 120 millimoles total. And now I can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is fairly simple. There's the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in all of its glory. And now I'm going to put in the pKa that I know from the table. I'm using the log of the moles, not of concentrations here, because the total volume of the solution into which both the weak acid and the conjugate base are dissolved is the same, and so it will cancel. Suppose it was one liter, I would have 120 millimoles over one liter and 80 millimoles over one liter. I've simply left out the volume in this case because the result is going to be the same. So I run these numbers through my calculator and I see, lo and behold, the pH is now 4.92. Remember that before there was any addition of a weak, of a strong base, the pH was 4.74. It was equal to the pKa. So the addition of a strong base has caused the pH to increase slightly, as would be expected for a buffer solution. So that's one situation. This was stressing the system with the addition of a weak base.
Now let's consider what happens, I'm sorry, with a strong base. It, let's consider what happens if we use a strong acid. So we're going to stress the buffer now with a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. So again, I'm going to start with one liter of buffer, which is 0.1 molar in acetic acid. I know the pKa. It's 0.1 molar in sodium acetate. And I want to know what is the pH after I add two, uh, 0 .00, 0 0.0200 moles of hydrochloric acid. So now I have to consider the reaction of the strong acid and that has to go to completion. And that will react with the conjugate base. So acid reacts with the base. So there's the reaction I'm looking at. Here is the strong acid, here is the conjugate base, and there is the product. So now when I build an ice table I will start with the number of millimoles of strong acid that came from this number right here, 0.02 moles of hydrochloric acid the number of millimoles of acetate that came from one tenth molar of sodium acetate times one liter or a thousand milliliters and I also have a hundred millimoles of acetic acid calculated the same way. This reaction goes to completion so I lose all of my limiting reagent which in this case happens to be H plus so I'm going to lose all of that. I react 20 millimoles. If I react 20 millimoles of this reactant, I have to react 20 millimoles of this reaction, reactant, and so I'm going to lose 20 millimoles of acetate. And I have to form 20 millimoles of the product, so I end up with 120 millimoles of acetic acid. And again, the calculation of pH from this point is straightforward using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. I simply need to plug in the number of millimoles into these concentration pieces and that looks like this and when I calculate the pH I get a pH of 4.56. Again I can compare that to the pH of the buffer before I added any acid which was 4.74 and notice that the pH has gone down just a little bit which is consistent with adding a strong acid. Strong acid will cause the pH to decrease. Okay, so those are fairly straightforward. We simply have to take care of a reaction, either of a strong acid and a weak base, or in the case on the previous page of a weak acid with a strong base. Take that reaction to completion and then consider what's left over afterward. But what happens if the strong acid or the strong base is not the limiting reagent? So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to stress this buffer this time with a lot of sodium hydroxide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 200 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide to a one liter sample of the buffer that is 0.1 molar in acetic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium acetate. So now I have to again consider the reaction of the strong base and the weak acid. That goes to completion. Here's the reaction. Acetic acid will react with hydroxide to form water and acetate. The ice table for that, I initially have 100 millimoles of acetic acid that came from 1 tenth molar times 1,000 milliliters. I have 200 millimoles of hydroxide that came from 200 milliliters times 1 mole per liter. And I have 100 millimoles of acetate from 1 tenth molar sodium acetate times 1,000 milliliters. In this case, the limiting reagent is now the weak acid. That means my buffer is in big trouble. So when I react this to completion, I run out of the limiting reagent, which in this case is the weak acid. If I lose 100 millimoles of the weak acid, I have to lose 100 millimoles of hydroxide, which leaves a residual of 100 millimoles. And I will also have to add 100 millimoles of acetate. Now at this point, I have a solution which contains a strong base. It contains 100 millimoles in 1.2 liters of solution. I got that from the 200 milliliters plus 1,000 milliliters, 1,200 milliliters, or 1.2 liters. The contribution due to the hydroxide ion concentration from the hydrolysis of the acetate is going to be negligible compared to the hydroxide ion concentration that came from this residual after I had taken care of this reaction. So that means the pH I can calculate by taking 14 minus the pOH and I can calculate the pOH from the residual hydroxide 
divided by the concentration, uh, divided by the total volume. And so that expression is here, 100 millimoles divided by 1200 milliliters, and the pH comes out to be 12.92. Holy smokes, that's really high compared to what it started with when it was a buffer. That happened because I exceeded the capacity of the buffer by adding too much strong base. And now the strong base is dominating the solution, leaving me with a very high pH. Okay, let's try that calculation now, but this time I'm going to destroy the buffer by adding too much acid. So I'm going to stress the buffer with a lot of hydrochloric acid. So again, I start with one liter of buffer, which is 0.1 molar in acetic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium acetate. The pH after I add 200 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, which is one mole per liter, is what I want to calculate. So again, consider the reaction of the strong acid with the conjugate base first, and that reaction goes to completion. You may notice a pattern forming here, since this has happened in all of the final four examples that we'll cover here. So here's my conjugate base reacting with the strong acid. The products are going to be water and acetic acid. I started with 100 millimoles of acetate and 100 millimoles of acetic acid from the buffer. I have added 200 millimoles of H plus in the form of hydrochloric acid, the strong acid. And now, once again, the limiting reagent is not the strong acid, but rather it is the conjugate base. That's the one that's going to run out. So I'm going to react all 100 millimoles of conjugate base, leaving zero at the end. I'm going to react 100 millimoles of H plus, leaving 100 millimoles, and I will form 100 millimoles of new acetic acid, giving a total of 200. Now, the solution that I have contains a strong acid and a weak acid, and the strong acid is going to dominate the H plus ion concentration. So the contribution due to the weak acid will be negligible. So in this case, the pH calculation, I take the number of millimoles of strong acid, divide by the total volume, Take the logarithm of that, change the sign, that gives me the pH, the pH is 1.08. And once again, you notice that the pH is very, very low because I have destroyed the buffer by adding too much of the strong acid. So in summary, we found that the Henderson-Hasselbach equation is very useful for calculating the pH of a buffer. That's something we already knew. You, and also, we found that you have to consider the reaction of either a strong base or acid with the weak base or weak acid of the buffer system. That has to be done first. And that reaction goes to completion. And based on the results of that reaction going to completion, we have, and which of those two was the limiting reagent, we will determine how to proceed. So in the, in the case that the limiting reagent was the strong acid or strong base, then the buffer is not destroyed, and so we calculate the pH using a buffer calculation using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. On the other hand, if the limiting reagent is the strong acid or strong base, then the buffer is going to be destroyed, and so now, excuse me, if the limiting reagent is the weak acid or weak base, the buffer will be destroyed. Now we will proceed by calculating the pH based on residual strong base or strong acid. And that, in summary, is how we calculate buffer problems when the buffer is being stressed by a strong acid or strong base.